Kia ora koutou katoa. You're tuned in to uh, making a statement. Uh, it is brought to you by Kia ora FM 89.8, the heartbeat of Rangitane. Check us out, man. Uh, it's also brought to you by On Target Productions for all of your videography needs. Check them out online, uh, ontargetproductions.com. Uh, visuals are brought to you by On Target Productions, by the wizards over there. Uh, check them out. So, it has been a wild weekend, fellas. Uh, first topic I want to bring up for y'all is the election. Hua oh boy, national one in a landslide. Thoughts? I just found out they're national one. You're joking. No. How did that slip under your radar? I've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> I heard all the I heard all the talk obviously about yes. national fucking being the ones that everyone was looking at voting for and they were probably gonna win, but if it's official, that's the first time I've heard of that. Right. When did it go official it today? It's technically not official, official no, is it? No. It's, uh, it's but it's it's, it's like a, a foregone government. conclusion that it's, it's gonna be an yeah. act national. It's an government. act national. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what they were polling it to prior yeah. to the election. Yeah. They played I, out just like the polls did. Yeah. So an, an overall concept, what does that mean to you guys? Well, uh, well hopefully I'm, change. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not much of a lefty and I lean yeah. quite a bit more to the right. So for me, I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Um, Can you explain lefty and righty? Yeah. Uh, so the, my interpretation of right. So just that's the, that's the uh, disclaimer at the start of the sentence. Uh, lefties are more liberal, you know, more about um, uh, sort of socialism, the, 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 the socialist type policy, whereas um, your yeah, righties tend to be a little bit more um, almost like business focused. Like if you think back, uh, National kind of ran the country a bit like a business yeah, when they were exactly. in power, yeah. whereas, whereas uh, the red side of the fence, they're much more about making sure benefits are good and everyone's getting their COVID payouts and all of that kind of nonsense while the national debt plummets down, which is well, why I'm not, you can come out, it's bleeding through now, eh? I'm not a lefty, it's bleeding yeah. through. Luxon's a, is a businessman as well, so. Yeah. And so was John oh, D. Yeah, yeah. John yeah. D. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so it's that, it's that sort of slightly more um, economic focus. Like. So what, what, are the, what are the policies they're promising? Like, what, what is it? Tax cuts is the first one. Tax cuts? Yeah, tax cuts. For petrol? Uh, so national was basically able to tax cuts and reduce the living costs, which is what everyone needs. Um, yeah. Simple as that. And X, uh, one of the platforms they were campaigning pretty hard on was the reducing unnecessary spending. So I think we see mm -hmm. that at all levels of government, local government and, and central government, we see ridiculous spending on bollocks consultancy or, you know, doing a feasibility study into the colour of the leaves on that tree before we cut it down. You know, they'll just burn through money because they don't have to earn it. You know, if you need more money and, you, and you're in a government... They you, just print... That or you, or you raise tax, yeah, or you yeah. you just collect more. You increase rates, or you increase tax. You know, it's not your money. You're not personally invested in it, so they can uh, have a tendency to be pretty pretty free and easy with it, right? I have a little fun fact. I walked out of the I think it was Subway. I walked out and there was a film crew, and they come down the street and they're like, um, uh, "What did they say? Oh, can we can we please interview you?" I said, "Oh yeah, what about?" And they're like, "Ah, oh, well, what is your opinion on?" Uh, the political campaign at current or something like that and it's like yeah sure i don't know much though and they're like what's your answer <laughs> and i was like oh fuck we're filming <laughs> so yeah i ended up on the news a couple of weeks ago to talk about politics but um yeah i was probably the wrong person for them to come up to with a fucking video camera but anyways um i did see a, a debate and it was the scenario with the uh the gangs and the police and yeah, tough uh, on crime it, is a national policy yeah yeah so but, there's, there's a left right switch right there so the lefties would be like oh let's just give them a hug and you know see if we can get them into jobs whereas the right side of the aisle is a bit more like fuck them they're criminals yeah we're gonna stop pussyfooting around cops. let's do something about it yeah yeah put them on the beat and make sure yeah. their presence is felt we're going to take their patches off them in public like, yeah it's yeah. a national policy is, it, is that is that what they're leading that to though they're no, wanting like, to lux them will pass it is they wanting to not have gang patches anymore he's yeah. going to make that illegal in public yeah. in public yeah I mean, that's what Australia he, has, he, right? He yeah. campaigned on it, and he, he was using that. He was saying that during the campaign. Yeah. He was using it, they do in Australia. So he's going to do it. Okay. He campaigned on it. He, there's no way he's not going to do it. What are your it. thoughts on that, Dills? I'm seeing some interesting facials as, as that's being raised. Tell me. I don't <coughs> know. My, 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 my overall viewpoint on the likes of gangs and that, yes, there's criminal behaviour that stems from all of that, but my thing is you can't say everybody that wears a patch is a bad person exactly. just like you can't say everybody that goes to church is a good person yeah that's my standpoint just because that's i do know a lot of people within that's, gangs that's very fair I, I actually support national but i don't support their policy at all it's interesting man i've always been more of like a lefty guy uh 
Well, I'll say who I voted for. I don't care. Who knows? I voted for the Greens, man. Yeah. Because okay. uh, climate change scares the hell out of me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'd appreciate it if uh, some of the politicians did something about that for future mm-hmm. generations. Put a bit more effort into it rather than a bit more talky-talky. Yeah, yeah. Because you yep. see it all those like G20, G whatever summits, you know, yeah. they're all like flying over there on their private jets, man. They're all lapping it up. They're staying in these nice five-star hotels. They're all giving themselves a pat on the back. Yeah, look at us. We're acting on, on you know, climate change. And then they go back to their big mansions, man. Too yeah. much hooey, not enough dooey. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. So uh, that's probably the big thing for me, you know. Uh, make sure this world doesn't burn. Yeah. The, the flip side of that, too, is the, um, the, the bullshit taxing that is... Uh, uh, pushed on under the guise of climate change right so we're going to tax the shit out of you if you buy a four-wheel drive ute yeah man yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and then yeah because because uh, money will fix the environment we'll just yeah. we'll take more money off you and we can fix the environment with that cash exactly, yeah. like yeah i don't agree with that what the fuck yeah mm. i think yeah. it's supposed to like incentivize you to stop using it and they're yeah. trying to push the evs but i think i don't know i haven't done any research into it but from what i've seen the the mining of the ore that goes into the batteries on those evs is actually worse for the planet than yeah so a lithium yeah, mine's usually something yeah, like five diesel. kilometers across it's a mm-hmm. giant upside down <coughs> cone into the earth yeah. where they just mine it out but i mean the, the flip side of that too is when they first push that like I, I drive a ute and i have a crap ton of gear i mean you guys watch me set the studio up today and it's mental and it's a fraction of the gear so when i need to take a heap i need to take a heap and at the time uh, an ev ute had a range of something like 150 k's when they first came out, and I'm yeah. like, "That's no good. That's good for a tradey around town, but I'm doing some long haul driving, so it's going to have to be a fossil fuel because there's not a. There is now. Now there's alternatives that'll get you know three 350 k's out of a tank, but you know, it's a pretty expensive to buy too. You know, uh, the battery to replace it as well is like five thousand. Yeah, so I've got to I've got to burn uh, an awful lot of diesel before I have um, reached the purchase price of an EV, you know, in terms of savings, because I can charge it at home overnight on electricity and all that sort of carry on. So, like, for me, like, yeah, burning dinosaurs isn't good for the planet, but from a purely financial perspective, yeah, yeah, (coughs) burning dinosaurs is still cheaper for me. So taxing me even to buy a new one isn't isn't going to change that. With the political change, is there still the whole concept under nationals you have New Zealand smoke-free by a certain date? God, I hope so. No, I don't don't know. that was 2025, wasn't it? Yeah. 20, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think any party will actually do it. My opinion. I you think mean they won't achieve it? They won't or, make or it illegal. Or they won't push it? No, they'll need to make it illegal. Yeah, that's... None Smoking cigarettes it. illegal? Yeah. Yeah, they'll need to. Well, then people will just be buying 20 bags of tobacco. <laughs> there'll be a black market black for market. it well, yeah. market. I've got friends that grow tobacco market. already I was, yeah. I was actually thinking of trying to push the old vapes as a black market if they were going to push them out just bulk buy them and then sell them off to the cuzzies <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean like, in, like, in between oh. wearing his gang patch and hanging out the windows yeah, of cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. at what point do we, do we sort of put our foot down and say hang on don't we have the right to choose like I understand that um, smoking and cigarettes oh, yeah. cancer and stuff um it does cost a lot in the the health side. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the point I'd make. By all means, choose. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely choose. It's your body and it should yep. be your choice. But you should choose to foot the bill for your health care. I agree. Yeah. You know, like yep. I, that, so that's the right in me that. coming out going, mm-hmm. fuck you, I don't want to pay for that. You know, I don't that... want to pay for your benefit. I don't want to pay for your health care yep. because you've done something stupid. Yeah. You know, because you chose. Health insurance. But is, yeah, isn't that why your health insurance asks? Have you, have you ever been yeah. a smoker? Yeah. yeah. Say, yes, things. in the last 10 years or whatever. For yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. 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 What do they do? Push the price up on yeah, you? Absolutely. Well, yeah. that or they oh, just won't yeah. cover why, you? why not just say no? That's a thing. That's, sometimes that's, they so do, that, sometimes. That sometimes yeah. yeah. Depends yeah. on their policies. No, no. Yeah, yeah. But like if I was going to apply for that and I was a smoker, I'd just say no. Oh, so uh, that's called fraud? Yeah. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah. But how, how can they prove that? Like, go through your Facebook because and see if you're... Because when you die and they have to pay out your... Um, life, insurance life insurance and your autopsy says your, your lungs yeah. are full of tar. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I just inhaled a lot of road. You were a road worker, though. Yes. <laughs> I was a road worker. I've never seen this you. I've inhaled a lot yeah. of road. Oh, and so you heard it here Not first. Like uh, in the Horta Whenua, they, uh, they roll up road and <laughs> smoke it. <laughs> Yeah, but no, no, they don't smoke it. They just inhale it. Yeah, it's yeah. huffing it, <laughs> huffing tar seal, huffing bitumen. Yeah. And I think this is a good cue, Logan, for you to introduce yourself, oh. considering your background and yeah. who you are and what who you do. I? Who am I? Um, Kelvin. My name is Logan Skelly, and uh, I'm a Class Five truck driver for Higgins, Palmerston North. I've uh, worked in the industry roughly ten years. 
Um, not just at Higgins. I worked uh, for the bro Ricky out at uh, Fulton Hogan. Um, yeah, I've been around the show quite quite a while. Um, straight out of high school into roading. So, um, yeah. Can that's... you do the whole Maldi version like when you're in primary school? Uh Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was that? But did he do pretty good on the old? Um, good, it's good, my brother. Just does that. He's <laughs> cruel. He'll he'll start a topic and then you'll you'll say something and then he'll just drill and ask a couple of questions on it and you'll run out of knowledge real quick and he's just sitting there <laughs> smiling, going, "It's it's all right. It's on Nathan's camera. He's he's in the spotlight. He's got to answer." Put them on the spot. But no, in saying that, well, what do you like about your job? What don't you like about your job? Ah. Uh, well, actually, that probably leads us into talking about the, uh, the men's mental health because as a truck driver, I'm alone a lot of the time, a lot of yeah. the time, um, and it does get quite lonely, um, you know, straight into the deeper meaningfuls, but you have a lot of time to sit there and um, and think and overthink and run run playbacks in your head of, Dumb shit you may have done in your life. Like, I do that so much. Um, dumb shit or overthinking? <laughs> both. Yeah, both. good. Yeah. Because I've done so much dumb shit, I have a lot to think about, you know. Um, we. We've done some dumb <laughs> we, shit. We have done a lot <laughs> of dumb shit. They have, definitely. Yeah. This is how learning and growth happens, though, <laughs> yeah, right? Doing, absolutely. Doing yeah. dumb shit. Yeah. yeah. If you want to be old and wise, you first have to be young and dumb. So uh, that's it. That's you're definitely going to be pretty wise, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm a smart. I'm going to be a smart old man. But in saying that, I think that there is truth to what you just said, definitely. But I think something that other people need to understand is you can learn from other people's mistakes. You don't have yeah. to make the mistake yeah. yourself. Yeah. Well, like, that's, that's why we talk about all the the stuff in our lives, right? That's gone a bit sideways or whatever. All those taboo topics that people won't talk about. It's the purpose yeah. of this podcast is to share some of that. For God's sake, learn from some of our retardation. Don't repeat our mistakes. Yeah, like yeah. 100%. Like, I, I feel like sometimes, though, with somebody sharing their story and they're sharing knowledge, people aren't listening to the knowledge. They're just listening to the story. Yeah. And then they're not taking in what you actually say. And then they go out and do the same thing themselves five years to ten years. Do we need to wrap the podcast up? And the moral of the story. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of the story is? Today's lesson is... Yeah, yeah. Don't stick your fingers in the toaster. Yeah. Don't stick your fingers anywhere you wouldn't put your dick. Oh, see, that feeds nicely to what that I tell both my sons, I was which told. is uh, don't put your dick in crazy. Yeah. That's another good that's, one. That, that's kind of the same thing in <laughs> some ways. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're, you, you wouldn't put your fingers in crazy either. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I wouldn't put anything in crazy, man. Just keep away from crazy. Not again. Yeah. Uh, not, not again. again. <laughs> I think we all, that's a story for a different that's time. We all know from experience. I think we all, that, we yeah. all have a not crazy. So instead of uh, getting your own crazy, just listen to us. Don't go and get a crazy. Don't yeah. get a Listen crazy. to our knowledge. Yeah. We're just sharing this wealth for you guys no to... No one's buying this nonsense. At least crazy, there's wild. So they're, no, they're they, run, they run hand in hand. We've gone nah, from nah, mental nah, health to nah, 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 nah. crazy. Yeah. I've been crazy and I've been wild. <laughs> so, uh, one more topic that I want to discuss with you gentlemen. I don't know if y'all have heard about uh, my man Will Smith. He's been having it rough lately, you know. Uh, there's been news about him and his... Uh, his strange wife, that's mm. one way to put it. A 52-year-old actress has revealed that she and Will have been living separate lives since 2016. Oh. The I Am Legend star has explained that the confession, quote, kind of woke him up uh, to his wife, wife's, quote, hidden nuances. To an email uh, to the New York Times newspaper, Will said, quote, when you've been with someone for more than half your life, a sort of emotional blindness sets in, mm. and you all too easily lose your sense of sensitivity to their hidden nuances and subtle beauties uh that's real beautiful man but uh how do you all feel about this considering what went down at the oscars uh keep my wife's name out your motherfucking mouth yeah uh with this news coming to light that they were separated since 2016 uh how do you all feel about that does will come off as a bit of a cuck well, did he say separate? Did she say separated, or did she say living, living separate living lives? Separate lives. Living, that's living separate that's lives. kind of different. That's right? some sneaky so, stuff, yeah. ain't it? Well, no, like, um, so I, I have weeks like this with my wife, where I'm just flat out, and your ship's passing in the night. And you could argue during that time we're living separate lives. She's mm -hmm. going to work, she's doing her thing with her friends, and I'm doing my thing, and I'm working, and I'm hanging out with you, eggs, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean. And we might not see each other for a fortnight, and. We're living separate lives. I live there like, weekly. Yeah, like, yeah well, because you're you emotionally disconnected changing. with your wife. No, no, that's no, no. the no. difference. And, and yeah, so no, it depends. That. I mean, the separate life is was it was it just 
did they know about each other's separate lives or has it just become out like that just com- a comfortable norm and they're just you know he's busy with his project she's busy with hers and like yeah, hang on I a think, sec you haven't I actually made time for each other they emotionally disconnected <coughs> many years ago and saying that and saying that and saying that if we go back to your question Pitta and you brought up the Oscars and, and what we've done at that I would do the same thing 100% um, right on, right if, on. if somebody was disrespecting my wife or anybody in my circle you'd be like hey that's my job and they meant it like you know this this shit was like it actually yeah. coming from a disrespectful place because they ain't. don't they don't have the right to say whatever they've just said so oh, do, hell yeah do you think it came from a disrespectful place or do you think he was just being funny I think he was being funny. I think he was yeah. being funny in the wrong way. Yeah. I think he was being funny, but he knew what he was doing. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. I think. So illness, all stirring the pot. All, all, all okay. do that, though. Oh, absolutely. Illness, though, you don't. If, if if somebody's survived, been a survivor of an illness, or they've had their life damaged from an illness or something, yeah, you don't the, then go make fun shit. of that yeah. in front of yeah. the whole world. Did, yeah. Did That's Chris right. Right. It's no, not that, just though. in front of the crowd that they were at. That shit was televised around right. the entire world. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so viral as a meme flow. But in saying that, he, you know, you do have to cross. Well, I think boundaries. the celebrities they run the risk of that anyway at the Oscars. Mm. Yeah, I, I, it's, it, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's a tough one. There is a bit of that, you know, like it's a tough one. It's, it's your wife. That, uh, you're I in see the public eye. Yeah, you're in the public eye. And but, you, but is that fair? You know, is, is that well, fair? I think, Are they I think not that, entitled I, to privacy? I think yeah. that's a price they pay for. That is R- rightly or wrongly, it's the price yeah. they pay. It is the, the price. I mean, like, they pay. if you look at like Eminem, right? He can't even go to the shop. No. There's all yeah. those stories. Eminem hasn't been to the shop for like 20 years. Or he puts it in his music. He wishes he could just go to Kmart. But because he's sacrificed his life to fame. Now he can't go anywhere without bodyguards and going in a black tinted SUV and getting escorted. Mm-hmm. And that's just the life they have to live because of the crazies. And look, you can understand that. that you don't want to put your dick on. Who wouldn't yeah, want to came up? We've got the paparazzi, I mean, Diana, for example. I mean, yeah. That's the yeah. price she paid for her fame. Yeah. Oh, that's another rabbit hole, that one. Well, that's Literally hounded to her death, hole, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's another rabbit hole, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, with what conspiracy so I don't, theories? I don't, I don't think, was an inside you know, job. To answer your question, yeah, I, Peter, I, I, I don't think Will Smith's a cock. Um, <laughs> a cock, yeah. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think he was genuinely defending his wife. I think, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think it's quite easy to uh, accidentally get comfortable with uh, with your relationship, you know, like and, and slip into that lazy comfortableness where you're not engaging with each other and you're not feeding and watering the relationship. And just blaming it th- on being I think busy. That's right. Time. That's right. And oh, it's actually got no time. Yeah, you need to make some. I think he would have made a better statement if he actually grabbed his wife by her hand, pick, pick, picked her up, and actually walked out. Yeah, I think that right. would have sent a stronger statement. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes, sounds like a PG one. Sometimes, sometimes you've got to handle it. Especially considering, especially considering he won the Oscar later on. Yeah. I mean, there was a plot twist, but I don't know. I personally feel like there is a. It's not necessarily violence i'm not going to sit there and say there's no. a place for violence but there is a right to protect i think and in that sense i feel like under those circumstances i can understand where he was coming from he was yeah. protecting her mana yeah you know he yeah. was and his, I and his own and his as own, well yeah. Yeah. i could get that yeah yeah, yeah but uh but yeah. then what what year did that happen it was only like, last, like, year? last year, last year. Two, isn't it? yeah but they've been living separate lives for since 2016 like how how close have they been since then? Are they slowly trying to come back together? I don't think or? so. End of the day, I don't give two fucks. No. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm firmly in the camp of that is none of my yeah. damn business. Oh, that's what I, I, like I the whole, really. let's keep up with the Kardashians and what they're doing. I don't give two fucks. No. I don't care about, I don't think it's fair that social media portrays news as news when it comes to celebrities and what clothes they're wearing. I'll, I'll tell yeah, you who handles, gossip. I'll tell you yeah. who handles the publicity the best. Russell Crowe. <laughs> he might fuck around. I was, was going to say Kanye West. Nah, Russell Crowe. <laughs> is he even famous anymore? I don't know. What don't is know he? What he he's, what's he famous for anymore? Well, like, exactly he'll like the Kardashians, run, he's famous he'll, for being he'll, famous. he'll probably run for president again <sighs> next year. We'll well, I, think, did you, I liked. I liked the Afro man stood for president I did he like, I would really? fully vote for Afro me and, me and how, how Logan just started be? listening to him yeah. again he's yeah. got some bangers Lemon Pound King. Yeah. 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 yeah I like yeah. the um, roll up I think it's cool I just yeah. can you imagine that you know like stepping up to the inauguration and there's you know like because they got high playing quietly in the background <laughs> Cold <laughs> well, 45 in saying that I saw a um, so there was all this talk about The Rock going for presidential campaign yeah. And he just went on a podcast about two weeks ago because he came back to WWE. He'd done a little surprise return thing. Yeah, actually, as a wrestler, Holly- not as a commentator or as, anything? As, no, as a, like a, as a wrestler. Yeah, awesome. But um, it's because Hollywood's on strike or something. 
right? So John Cena's left the movie scene and gone back to wrestling. The Rock came back back. temporarily. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a podcast thing about two weeks ago. I watched it and he was actually talking about the the real consideration about his next step potentially involving a presidential campaign. Right. So, I mean, that would be interesting because then you'd see somebody get voted in by all the people that don't vote, you know, they're going to vote just because it's The Rock. And yeah. then what happens? Well, this is the challenge, well, depends though. depends what party it, he joins. That's with, right, yeah, it's and, a popularity and, contest. And he's, yeah. Yeah, it depends what party he joins and it depends on his special interests because yeah. he left special interests. But every 18-year-old ain't going to give two shits. They're just going to be like, I want to vote for The Rock. And I wouldn't be surprised if him and Oprah have been talking about running together. Because they've been doing a lot of was stuff it, together. Was it those two that were recently under fire because under, of the yeah, because donation of Hawaii. to Hawaii? Hawaii, yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if those two actually run together. Chair, yeah, welcome to Cuzzy Bee's Recipes. Today we're going to put what have we found in the garden and fridge on a pitta. Going to chop up some chicken thighs. Chuck them in the bowl. Put some paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, turmeric. No salt and pepper because the cousin didn't refill his grinders. There's none in there. Yeah. Oh, cousin. There's none in there. Yeah. So we're just going to put some chicken salt in there. Put some Greek yogurt in there, unsweetened. Mix it all up. Fry it in batches. Chuck it in the oven. Put it on grill. Wash the lettuce, because we've got a snail in there. Chop some of these cousins up, they're pretty cheap at the moment. Slice the tomatoes. Grate some cheese. Chuck yesterday's fried onions in the in pan. Chop up some spinach. Chuck it in there. Cool, fry it up, mean. Chuck them in the bowl. All the chicken out that we chucked on through. Mean colour. Just assemble it how you want. Best foods mayo. All the way. Just chuck everything on the putter. Boom. Shout out to Fire Dragon Chilies for these products. They are mean, man. Hot. And that's it. Yeah, hopefully he's got the hint and he's just randomly recording stuff and we're talking shit and we think yeah. we're off I'm camera. recording now. Oh, that just sucked all the air Good. out of the room. <laughs> Not as bad as Dill's intro last week. The way that Every time you put your arm up on the couch and pull that face, every time you're like, it's exactly like when you went burp last week and I, I get nervous. <laughs> I think he should that's, be getting nervous. That's how he does it. That's, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Doesn't let it like come out naturally. He's got to like uh, lift, it, yeah. lift a cheek and just... There's, a, there's an art to it because if you do it as much as I do, you're trying to fart around a shit. Because yeah. you're trying to make sure that you don't shit. Yeah. Right. So no incidental sharting. It's yeah, just he's a, been under a lot of shit. Yeah. Like if I go to the golf course, I take baby wipes. Have you managed to um, shit yourself in public? Yeah. 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 yeah probably he, in front of him. In front of him. About like this hour or <laughs> so today. <laughs> was or? that a? Was that a? What did you do with the underwear? Did you flush it, burn Which it? Time? No. You, fold it. Usually. Neatly? Usually. Like I said, if I'm on the golf course, I've got wet wipes in the golf bag. But yeah. if I'm sharded, I'll just go to the toilet and then you just kind of dry out, you know, with the toilet paper, your butt and your undies. And then you just kind of put something there, like a layer, and then you just carry on. You just smell pad. like shit for the rest of the day. You put soap on it. <laughs> what the hell? That's like, tricks. People, that's like people that violate a toilet and then spray a bit of Glade around. So now I've got a bathroom that smells like shit and potpourri. But uh, Cheer Man, right into those submitted questions. Actually, before we do those, want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Cheer Man, almost forgot. Uh, shout out to Kyoto FM 89.8. Check out the Wa Fakata, 3 to 6 p.m. weekdays. Uh, chill vibes, man. Uh, check out On Target Productions on their social media as well. OnTarget.com. I believe I said it right, right, ma'am? OnTargetProductions.com. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Cheer boy, and, also, and making a statement entertainment, yeah, and making should, a statement we entertainment. Should maybe push that, maybe making maybe. a statement.co.nz. And you could get making a statement apparel. Go jump on the website, and make your order. 
Uh, apparel is a lot like apparel, um, which is clothing. But <laughs> Dill's people like, from Foxton. Yeah, I'm from Foxton. <laughs> he's a, like, no, he's, I've, he's, got a, I've got a story right now. Oh, he's a lyrical gangster. He gives gangster. me shit about saying kwasabi. Yeah, yeah, don't ever say kwasabi. Kwasabi? Yeah, I don't know Carry where he goes. pulls that from, but I was in the office, right? So I, I work as a manager in, a, in an office format, so you can already tell, like, right there, there's kind of a professional that setting someone's to it. made an HR mistake employing you yeah. as a manager. <laughs> yep, no, I'm breaking the yeah, stigma right. in the office, actually. Like, I interviewed somebody last week, and she, at the end of the interview, you thanked me because she felt comfortable because when she walked into the room I had tattoos all over myself right which is different compared to what most people would see when they walk into an office I'm in the same boat we're just taking on a casual that's like a young lady full sleeves and then right up onto her neck and um, working in a hospitality environment some of the oldies are a bit like Arr! and I'm like have you seen who she's serving like yeah it's breaking the stigma for 100%. that in that setting but for me in the office you know there's a sense of professionalism that I'm I'm probably expected to uphold mm -hmm. and I'm already kind of on the on the on the verge because I use black Nike kicks as my professional work shoes because I make sure they're just polishable versions and my, my office is you know my boss is, is uh you know good enough to allow that but uh yeah somebody came up to me and they were talking to me about something and at the end of it I, th I finished it with thanks as <laughs> thanks as bro <laughs> thanks as and so I think that was the Foxton in me it just the slipped Foxton out in the office you? what does that like, even mean thank I, you so much thank you heaps <laughs> thanks as <laughs> Even thanks heaps. Is that like says. cool as? I like, don't know. Like really cool. It, I like it's cool as. So thanks as. It slipped out. Yeah. Do you say use? Nah. Good. Like, nah. Yeah, or I or axe. I can't buy. Oh, are you gonna? Ax. Or say the axe me a quick. Are you gonna axe me or ask me? Because I don't want to die. Well, ax is even worse. Ax. Like, yeah, that's, that's, well, that's, <laughs> that's a wooden boat that you put the animals in. Noah had one. Exactly. Or, or with the positive and the negative touch. Oh, that's arc. also uh, that's, that's yeah, like in welding. That's yeah. axing or, or as well. Or what you get married under. Oh no, that's an arch. That's arch. Arc. <laughs> 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 hey, and he's the one that just got married. Arc, yeah. I was married under an arc. He was uh, thanks as uh, Dill. Thanks he as. He got married under an arc. Super. You, you can An see it, it, that just fell out. So if anybody's going to be watching this podcast, expect some Foxton in me to fall out. <laughs> awesome. Love that it. That being said, let's move over to our submitted questions. Yeah, breaking the stigma. <laughs> breaking, breaking the stigma. The stigma. Breaking First, something. so we get questions in from online all the time uh, from our social media. Uh, going to be dropping these on YouTube as well. And uh, so our first submitted question uh what are some strategies you've found work for you when it comes to dealing with mental health problems? Do you want me to kick it off? Yeah, go yeah, hard. Go it, um, so, I, in my in my role at work, um, being alone all the time, thinking about whatever, whatever, all your depression, your bad shit that's happened in your life. Um, what a technique I found that works, and I actually got from a, a counselor that I took up from. Um, work EAP the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. health yeah, services we've got that yeah. Week too, yeah. um, you know couldn't recommend that enough um, was grounding yourself so in my situation I'm sitting there and I can find something I can see uh, find something I can touch smell hear um, even as simple as you know sort of rubbing my hands around the the steering wheel how, how wide is it how what does it do when I pull it what you know the gear stick and it's a way of getting yourself to think more clearly rather than overthinking about a situation you're in it's so almost being deliberately like conscious about your surroundings exactly what yeah. can i hear it's forcing yeah. a can I smell? forcing a change of thought of process thought, yeah I like, awesome. that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And it's a, it's a technique that i use i don't want to say every day because it's not every day um but very very often like paracetamol, take as required. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, how, would you, killers, how would you know when it's time to start tapping into that? At what point in your mind are you going, oh, well, this is too much. I need to play um. with the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just drove out the site, but I haven't touched the steering wheel yet. Um, no, I think you got to know in yourself. you got to be aware of, of what your mood's doing, what your mind is doing. Listen to what you're actually thinking about. Um I was going to ask a supplementary question to that. Is like, how do you catch yourself? Because I find it super easy to go down the rabbit hole. So you're a little way down, but you know, like, how do you catch? How do you interrupt that cycle? Yeah. Catch yourself at the right moment. And that and that is a hard thing. Is being really self aware and knowing yeah. where you're at on your. Because everyone's got a different level of tolerance. Tolerance, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess would be the word. Um, you know, a, a really bad day for someone 
may be like rock bottom for someone that might be the end or standard for someone else or, or yeah or standard for someone it's else such an important thing to understand eh, when you're yeah. dealing with other people that yeah. you know like yeah that that little thing for you that little inconvenience for you yeah we want our own limits that's yeah. right might be the straw that broke that camel's back yeah, for exactly, them yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and saying that, just branching off on that question with my answer, music. I've always said this since the first episode. We said on the second mm-hmm. episode, saying it on this one again. That's my vent. That's my outlet. So if I'm going through anything, whether it's happy, sad, emotional, heartbreaking, breakup material kind of stuff, love material stuff, kids, family, whatever, I can express myself and vent, and that's my platform to do so. But outside of that, I've got an uncle. So he was uh, the one that got me into fishing when I was young. Um, so rest in peace, Shane. But um. Yeah, when I was younger, I grew up with him and I spent every Sunday with him and he taught me how to fish, he taught me what pies to eat. You know, he was like my uncle, but he was like a big bro kind of thing as well. Yeah. And um, I, we, he, he passed away in uh, 2008. He went missing after going kayaking in Wellington. And uh, what I do, and I still do it to this day, is in Fox and the River Loop spot that he used to take me to, to go fishing. If I need my time for me, whether yeah. it's to reflect, whether it's to gather my thoughts, whether it's to calm down, I drive there and I chill, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and I yeah. recoup, whether yeah. I'm sitting in the car, whether I get out and sit on the seat, whether it's day, whether it's night, whatever, that's my little safe zone that I can escape to, to go and kind of reconnect and, you know, find yeah. myself. Yeah. I think we um, we under underappreciate or underutilize the, um, the healing powers of, of Earth, though. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. It may, it may seem a bit weird to some people, but even walking in bare feet or f- yes um in the grass but or in the water yeah water water water, water fishing, mm-hmm. fishing even fishing is amazing for um your mental clarity and your fridge yeah, yeah. your fridge <laughs> and freezer. your water um <laughs> but i think too a lot of people don't realize got fuck all to do with the rod or actually catching fish it's actually yeah. about yeah taking but the, the time standing so, in ankle deep water I think it's me, nature me and, it's a nature yeah me and the Mine's old man more, i think yours is mountains isn't it you yeah. like the mountains yeah 100 yeah. but me and the old man bought the boat that we mentioned on a previous podcast yeah. and this guy right here is the main <laughs> guest on that boat skippering it with us he's and your lead deckhand yeah, yeah he, nice. he was my dickhead. I'm a seaman. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a seaman. That was a dickhead with he, an He saved him. He yeah, but I mean, the amount of memories we've created on that boat, we could have the, the shittest week under the sun, but by the time we get out there and it's just us, there's no phone service, yeah. all it is is us catching up, doing our thing. Yes, there's a rod in the water, but at the at the end of the day, even if we come home with nothing, we've still made a memory. Yeah. Even if we didn't get out there because the boat broke that's down the on the way <laughs> on the way out there, and then we're trying to float back, we still a well, made a memory. Of fishing. That's that. Uh, you don't have that, to catch nothing. That's that age old bumper sticker, eh? The worst days fishing is better than the best at work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. exactly, man. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so I, th- I think that's my personal outlook on that question. But Eddie, yeah. did, I want you to yeah, speak um, to that. Well, mine's. Mine's working out. Mm. That's that's when I'm at that when I'm at that low point. But I can catch myself. So I'd, when I was younger, I couldn't catch myself. And I think as you get older, I think you you work your limits out. So when I was younger, I had issues because I used to let myself sink to rock bottom. But but now, um, if I'm just feeling a little bit down, I catch myself early, and I know I've got to I've got to personally exert that energy. Um, I don't like cardio, but yeah, my, mine's mine's weights. It, it's it's crazy. I just do some deadlift, do some shoulder press, do some curls. Mine's weights. I, I if I can vent it, I'm happy. If I can, I, I will, mm-hmm. punching a bag doesn't do it for me. I know it does it for some other people. So doesn't for me. It, <laughs> do, it does for me. I'm it, glad it that I makes, started. It actually makes me angrier. Yeah. So I don't like punching a bag to vent. I have to. I have to get rid of that energy in other ways. And golf. Golf, yeah. Yep, golf. Yep. So mine's mine's will, will always be to catch myself and get myself in a better a positive mindset. I have to. I have to work out. I have to do something. Um that's why I like swimming. Sw- what a- swimming's yeah. What about breathing exercises? I mean, does nah, anybody tap I've tried, into I've, that? I've yeah, tried that. I've tried that. I've, I just you, you stress balls. You have to be really patient to yeah. to get the breathing techniques right, and you need to learn how to do it before you're there. Yeah. Because yeah. if you can't do it when you're just sitting there having a conversation with the boys or whatever, there's no way in hell that when you're in your lowest, that you're gonna sit there and go, Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know. Yeah. Um, 
What yeah, about stress balls? I, I just want to say, if you are low, stay away from substances. Stay away from alcohol. It's not going to help you. Hey, I've got another one is, uh, that we haven't t- tapped into, and it's just talking. Talking. I mean... I think talking helps. I, I've been very big with, and Logan can vouch for it, is if my friends need somebody to talk to, I will always be the person there to allow them to have that space to talk if they need to. Everyone in my everyone in my circle knows that I will always make time if they need to talk. I would rather give an entire, I don't care how long, I'd give an entire weekend to a friend that needs to talk. I would much rather do oh, that yeah. than spend 10 minutes giving a good eulogy. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I've, 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 after they've, you know, top themselves or something, I have a little, I'd much rather listen. I have a scenario just from the weekend and uh, a mate of mine tried calling me on Saturday night at about 10 o'clock well I, didn't, I just didn't see the call like we were, we were being really busy my phone wasn't even on me i didn't see it until later on in the night but then i found out yesterday morning that that night he ended up going out drink driving and got done by the police for drink driving and and tried to i think evade the police got tackled broke his ankle and all the rest of it but i keep thinking what if i answered that phone call and i yeah. could have had a conversation with him because we were talking about music and we we're building mm-hmm. our plans you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a, that's a little, and, and it's worse for those that miss <clears> that <throat> phone call, and it's not that is the outcome, but even worse. Yeah, I, I had that um, while we we're at high school. You know, one of the um, one of the fellas back at high school, um, I messaged him while I was on the piss one night, and uh, he he didn't reply. He didn't even see the message. But then I saw he had seen it. Must have been about three, four o'clock in the morning, and had messaged back. And it turned out that it was like maybe minutes after that that he ended up topping himself or killing mm-hmm. himself. And I don't like to think that I attributed or I don't like to think that I could have saved or helped save. Um, because truth be told, we weren't even that close. Like, um, But it was still, still fucking yuck to find out. Mm. And you can't help what if thing, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit like deals with his missed phone call, like, but you you can't be on a hundred percent of the time. You can't be yeah. available a hundred percent of the time, you know. But th- I think the best you can do is make damn sure that those that you care about, and even just acquaintances, you know, that if they need to talk, that you will take time. Mm. Um, Mike King was doing that um, amazing tour around the country, oh, yeah. and. Um, a lot of it was aimed at uh, adults listening to kids and, and how you can help. And um, he had those, he had these awesome, like those rubber wristbands, and he had some for the adults. And um, what was really cool is if you'd gone along to one of his talks and you'd uh, tooled up and got some new tools for listening to kids and helping them with stuff, you get one of these, one of these wristbands. And it was cool because it was just like a silent way that a kid could go, I know I can talk to that yeah. adult. I've got one at home. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we had a similar thing. We we have had um, Mike King come to to work and present. Yeah. But we've also thing. had uh, what we what we have is mates in construction, and what you get at the end of that is a, a little sticker that just goes on the back of your hard hat, like you would have a first aid certificate um, gotcha. sticker. Gotcha. Someone in your crew that you can go and talk to if you need to. Yeah. And I thought that's a bloody good idea. Like a support yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. A, a designated, not designated, no. but they're probably volunteering. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's yeah. that whole, I give a shit and I will listen, and it's just a silent way of like... But there's a, there's I, a stigma behind mean, that, right? I love the work that Mike King's doing too with mental yeah, health. Awesome, I love it. So love good. It. That's one of the reasons I've actually considered opening up about it is because three years ago he came into work. Yeah. Yeah. And just... It's been a pretty powerful message. Well, um, let's manifest and say... And, and Tyson Fury too. Tyson Fury opening up Let's about manifest it as well. and eventually say Mike King is going to be a guest on this podcast. Well, hopefully. Yeah, just ask him nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Pull strings. He can only say no. We'll just ask nicely. Yeah, just ask nicely. He can add some stuff to the mystery bag. If he, if he hasn't got time to pop in, he can like chuck some questions in our bag of hard questions. and Or just get him in here. You could have a mystery munch. Oh, yeah. the old McTittle. <laughs> the old McTittle <laughs> burger. Does that, go, does that right. go good with lamb? Right. Yeah, does that go good with lamb? Yeah, how about we quickly touch on what you had to eat last week, Eddie? No, nah, I don't want to. <laughs> I, I didn't like that, actually. <laughs> his face, my goodness. There was a lot of questions. Looking a lot at, of people no, talking about that. Looking at his face, the, as it, that his was last tongue, week. just watching it register, eh? And it was just a treat. It was oh, such a delight. So, and my stomach still was a little bit gassy from those kidneys. What stones. have you done yep, to my, me? my yep. stomach was a little bit gassy at the and start what, of the episode what, too. What was actually <laughs> in it? Because oh from the snippets I've seen, it looks like a cow pat 
in pastry. Yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly, a great description. That is, that's exactly we were looking at it like that's that what looks thinking. like shit. It looks how did like it get cow shit? How did it get green? green? How did it get green? Yeah, and it turned out it was yeah, vanilla squid. Vanilla, vanilla squid. Vanilla squid right. with toothpaste, fish oil, and wasabi, heart, wasabi, kidney. Uh, yeah, and pastry, and probably cheese. And look, to be there was fair, no cheese. <laughs> Cuzzy B did a fantastic <laughs> job on the pie. Like the pastry was, looked absolutely yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it was golden like brown. It, it, it was perfect. It looked absolutely yeah. presentable <laughs> until it was cut open, and it was like that's that's then shit. That shit did anyone smell it? No, <laughs> I don't know. How, how did it smell? I didn't smell it. Interesting, because mm-hmm. some of the other pies we sampled that were, they were God, they were so good, eh? Um, as soon as they came in, as soon as Cuzzy B brought them in, we got this waft of, oh, that smells good. Like, mm-hmm. whatever that is, it's delicious. Whereas that one, I didn't notice I shut my any eyes. odor. I shut my eyes. I didn't smell that. It was going straight in the gob and untasted. Maybe it was like <laughs> dusted with Grand's Remedy, you know, the, the foot stuff so oh. that you can't smell it. Yeah. That's awesome. Be interesting anyway, to see what tonight's mystery moment is. Yeah, exactly. That's where I was going. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> let's I don't talk. want to relive Actually, that memory anymore. So Yuck. while we're on that, let's talk about um, how one might wind up uh, partaking in the mystery munch this evening. There's a we've got a bit of a, a challenge, a bit of a quiz. Yeah, we're playing twenty one questions. Peter, do you want to run us through the rules? Yeah. So uh, you'll each be asked uh, seven beginner, seven intermediate, and seven advanced general knowledge questions. Uh, broken them down for y'all. Uh, seven from each category, and whoever has the least amount of points at the end will lose and face the mystery munch. And it's uh, brought to you by uh, Eat Crawlers. Oh yeah. Fun times. Oh, so no. I think y'all I've, can I've guess. Done that. Eat crawlers? I've, I've had uh, scorpion and Same. we've had tarantula. Check them out on their social media. That, that is eat crawlers. Tarantula. Eat crawlers. Let's that's go. A, that's a really fun um, thing oh, to Google no. too. Is like how many spiders you will eat in your lifetime while you're asleep. Yeah. Yeah. I've like, those real I've fun statistics that. of like stuff you like breathe in and eat and stuff while you're asleep. Another myth I remember as a kid was if you swallow your chewing gum, you're not going to shit it out for seven years. Yeah. No, and so the truth to that statement is uh, evidently the gum would survive seven years in your digestive system in terms of like that's how tough it is to break down. But you know and I know like corn, it's coming straight out. Yeah, we see yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. There's some juicy fruit in my tooth. Sulfuric acid is going to be in that. Come on. Isn't it hydrochloric? It is hydrochloric. Is it? Yeah. yeah it's an acid. Oh. Sulfuric <laughs> acid, isn't that rotor? <laughs> doesn't that's hydrochloric. hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, um, isn't that when it breaks the food down and then it turns into sulfur? Yeah, it's an acid. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you're, they're going to be in there. You're quite right. Hydrogen sulfide's one it of the glass. Um, gases in, a, in well, Dills's opening statement last yeah. podcast. He yeah. made it. He we made need to statement. save one of those for every introduction because that got a good laugh. It, it well, that's was well received. That's because they couldn't taste it. Yeah, or smell um, it. Whereas not only could we smell, I, I was tearing up, but it was more like a stinging sensation more than yeah. That was last week's yeah. mystery I think, munch. <laughs> air biscuits for everyone. That's right. Dills dropped an air biscuit, and Eddie just about got pink eye. He was in range. I yeah. love that term air biscuit, and I've actually had people say that since that episode. Yeah, I like think that? I can't remember who it was, but the old it air was, it's a good one. Yeah, let's. Move on. Let's ask these questions. Put up. Let's move on. Eh? Shall we move on <laughs> to the 21 questions? Before Let's. I do a party. All right. So uh, this one is around uh, movies and TV. What was the highest oh. grossing film of all time? Titanic. Was it? Is yes. This, what is Avatar. the highest, grow- no, what is the highest grossing film of all time? Avatar. No take back season on my... Uh, 21 that's questions. Good, yes, that's a good Avatar's mine. So if you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you lose two points. Yeah. Ooh. Sheesh. The highest grossing movie of all time, baby. Lord what of the Rings. Um, which one? Like, <laughs> there's yes. multiple Lord of the Rings. Um, Three of those bad boys. Are you going to give an answer or there, Nathan? Any of them. Just chuck the hobbits in there, too. Yeah. Peter Jackson. Oh, I'm just... Can you, can you t- count us re- down, Peter? He's I, taking too long. I really think one of you is right. Um, I'm yep. just, He's locked in I'm, Lord I'm, of the Rings. I'm, I'm doing the maths in my head. Like, I'm actually going to You might have to put a time Avatar. on it. Yeah, yeah, can we count down, Peter? Five. Something. Oh, what happens if you four, pass Avatar? Three, two, one. He said Avatar. What happens if you pass? I reckon you should lose a point if you pass as well. You know, there's no, there's no piping out. Was it Barbie movie? I can't remember. So, what were our answers? We got someone said Avengers? No, Avatar. Avatar. Yeah. Uh, yes, so it is Avatar oh, 1. Oh, fuck. Who said that? Me and Nathan. Me and uh, Eddie. No. You lying. The long tail Titanic. Lord of the Rings, number five, <laughs> the <laughs> Avatar. He's just got a thing for I don't Leo. think Nathan gets one because I'm first to it. Uh, maybe you both get half a point. 
No. Oh, isn't that what we said? First person to get it right gets the point. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's mm-hmm. actually Eddie said it first. Okay, so that, that one there, that one there was the practice round. Oh, no, no Eddie not. gets a point. You're just trying, oh, to, feed, he's trying to feed him another no shit practice pie. Rounds on my... Yeah, he's trying to feed you another shit pie. <laughs> a crawler pie. Okay, so at, at, based off that, me and Logan are on negative two. Correct, and I do nothing because yeah, I was right, but I wasn't. Right. I wasn't quick enough to get a point from it. I see. Okay, yeah. but so I Nathan's agree. on negative two. No, <laughs> he's not. That is incorrect. That's it. He got the answer right. He wants a crawler. No, just this copying guy. my answers. Like he's that. up, that's up there with well, we can't, that seat. We can't, can't, can't if you yell it out first. Yeah, did you exactly. say Avatar Dolls? Yeah. No, he no, said no, Titanic. He said Titanic. Oh, uh, you did. You did. Oh, yeah. Didn't. Thanks, is. Thanks, is. Thanks, is. So it was our man Logan who got it. No, it's no, Eddie. No, it was Eddie. Eddie. Kidding. This, is, <laughs> this guy's trying to get me <laughs> again with this yeah, yeah, I'll take it. I'll <laughs> take it. But I'm, I'm keeping score I go, this yeah. week. I heard I got it out for you, uh, Lord of the Rings. Flies. There's a... No. Let's do another movie question then. What movie has made the most through merchandising? Star Wars. Star Wars. No, that would have to be... I think that's the answer. Of course I mean, if the right Franch- answer hasn't Fran- come out. Franchise or, or movie? Or is it Titanic because everyone no. buys doors? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should get one for the boat. <laughs> so that you can so that you can push them off and sorry load. You can't fit. <laughs> yeah, the door there in case it sinks. Uh, yeah, Hold do. me, Jack. You okay, so, so, so just, just, just to confirm, the right answer hasn't been called out yet, Peter. That's not what he said. Oh, oh it has. Okay, first one to get it, you got to call it. All right, that was uh, to Nathan. You said Star Wars, right? Star Wars, you were yeah. okay. So he's just caught right up as negative that. two. He's back at one. Well, it's not right. yeah, negative one now. Nice, nice. So <laughs> we're still at negative two, but a positive one. Worse. I think you'll find yeah. it. Can positive get worse. one. No, but we didn't get worse. No, we didn't get worse. As soon as you hear that answer, Peter, boom, call it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dills is negative two. Logan negative two. Nah, Eddie I think you've positive got to give people one. The opportunity to say the wrong answer and lose points as well. No, no, because you're going to not want to shout out the wrong answer. So that you're going to have to contemplate well, what you're going to shout out. Once I, you shout it out, you I can't still change. think we're doing this the same way we did the first question. Everyone's got to give an answer. Nah. Yes. Just, who, first, you need negatives. No, first come, first serve. First in, first serve. If you mm. say it wrong, boom, you lose a mm. point. All right. Let's points. get another one. Uh, how old was Tom Cruise when he starred in Top Gun back in 1986? Twenty-four. He was a young boy back then. Who said that? Me. Uh, yeah, that's, that's to you. He was 24 years old was back he? then. What yeah. a good guess. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Was that a guess? That was absolutely a guess. Because he yeah. absolutely was 24 oh, years old. Yo. Awesome. Well done. How good. Fuck. Now I'm losing. <laughs> Just that's, yeah, munch away. Munch it, munch it. All right, give us one that I know. Put, a, put, put, put the answer, just like put it on the screen over there so I can see it. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Here's a bit of a Kiwi movie question. What year did the Kiwi Smash hit Whale Rider come out? Do y'all remember that one? Kesha Castle Hughes? Written by Witty how, how do you know that, bro? How did you know it came out in 2002? That was so quick. My man. brain just remembered where I was <laughs> back when it came out. I've got it. Was it actually the answer? Yeah, yes, it, was, it actually did come out in two thousand and two. Like, yes. <laughs> that was that was written by Witty Ahumaida, mm. and I've got a I've got a cool Witty story from last week that I'll share with you after the segment. Okay, that was um, Keisha Castle Hughes, eh? Yeah, yeah. I love you, Keisha. Pew, yeah. pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Shout out to Keisha Castle Hughes, man. Yo. She was awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool, and Fuck. she was very very young in that film too. She did incredibly well. So where am I now? Yeah. Zero, are you? you yep, are you are at zero at the yeah. moment. She's going back to zero. Nathan's on one. Dills is on minus two. Eddie's on one. So, uh, Eddie and Nath tied at Was one. Was Titanic ever the highest? I feel Native. like I it really was. wasn't. It, it, it might have been. Until Avatar. Avatar came out. Okay, so you didn't no. specify in which <laughs> year. No. He said of all time. Of all time. Yeah. Of all time. Yeah. Yeah. But at, at all what time, time period? Because they're all, of all time back in like 2009. Just, just you know what they say, Dylan? Moving uh, on, Dylan. Excuses are like assholes. Everyone's got yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Mine's, mine's a good asshole. <laughs> nice and tender. All right, next one. Tittle, tittle. Good old tittle, tittle. Next one. My man Arnold Schwarzenegger starred in two movies in 1984. Uh, can y'all name one of them? Come on, Commando. Go. I didn't answer. Kindergarten that, Cop. That was us together with Commando, wasn't it? At exactly the same mm-hmm. time. Was Terminator I just named one of them. both of them. So, yeah, I heard Commando, uh, Kindergarten Cop, and Terminator. Yeah. Uh, Dills, that one goes to you, my man. Terminator 2. Was that, it Terminator? It was Terminator and Conan the uh, Destroyer. Hello. So you're up to minus one, minus and we just one. dropped down to minus one, both of us. Yes! All three and, of us. And no, you were on <laughs> you, minus one. You didn't oh, say zero. Yeah, he's, he's, on zero. he's winning. He's winning. He's not. He's on minus two. All the wrong. visual effects no, brought to you by On Target Productions. Oh. 
<laughs> in post production. What were the two on movies, target productions? Brother? We'll be editing this to make <laughs> Nathan look correct. Yeah, <laughs> well, you just see my lips move. You you what were the two movies? <laughs> Conan the Destroyer and ah. Terminator. Did you answer? Ah. No. no, no. He's no. on. He's on zero still. So he's leading. What am I on? Uh, you are on minus one. Oh, so I'm second equal. <laughs> How do you get it? Well, third equal. We All right. This is the last uh, movie and TV question. What movie is this quote from? I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Oh, I'm not even asking. Is it a movie see... or is it a TV show? I'm walking here. I'm scene. walking here. It's a movie. I can see the scene in my head too. Does he sound like that? Good. Yes, he does. Be... I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Got to be something in Boston. Yeah. I don't, I don't That's know. a tough one. I ain't yeah. shouting nothing out. I want my negative one to stay where it is. Can we have another movie? <laughs> uh, Since no one understands? No, no. that's it. We, we don't know the answer. So no if one no one knows the answer, passing. I'll just say it, I guess. Midnight Cowboy 1969. Yeah, no. Right on, man. So uh, next one, I've got a couple video game ones I want to ask as well. <laughs> but they're not like for all the MLG Pro gamers. So for any of you non-gamers uh, in there, y'all will be good. Don't worry. Uh, so first one. Uh, which do you think makes more money? The movie, sports, and music industry combined or the gaming industry by itself? Gaming, gaming industry. industry. I think I heard everyone answer that, but Nathan, am I right in that assumption? Yeah, no, it's I, actually these two. I answered themselves. if it was right. No, it was Eddie and I that spoke. Eddie and Logan, oh, was it? Yeah, because yeah. y'all are oh, both was... right, man. Y'all are both right. The gaming industry makes more mm. money, more than three wow. times as much money yeah. as the music industry wow. and almost four times as much as the movie industry. One of the main reasons for the gaming industry's success is the increasing popularity of mobile gaming. And mm. kids, True online. kids with their mum's credit cards Roblox. playing Fortnite. Yeah. And that Fortnite, V-bucks. man. V-Bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can tell just what Fortnite gives out in tournaments. Yeah, yeah. yeah ridiculous money. Uh, shout out, we got uh, Dill's negative one, Logan zero. We got Eddie two, Nathan negative one. How are you on two, Hold on, Eddie? are How these still the two? one point rounds or Eddie these two points? on one. I'm on one. Yeah, one. Or is Eddie on one? He's yeah, on, on one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I just get a point? <laughs> Jump oh, okay. in the uh, I want to play poker with Eddie because his poker face is crap. And <laughs> I reckon I, if I, as long as I could play, I could take all his money. That's a bold statement. Yeah, I played um, poker with him, he's pretty good. I wouldn't. You should have seen his face then, eh? He was all like... They'll that's take like you up on that. That's, that's actually their, their family thing is poker. Oh, yeah. can you guys teach me? Oh, oh, actually, what, yeah. we're going to have a poker night. We'll put it on the podcast. Oh, 100%. <laughs> well, I tried teaching these guys on yeah. the night before our wedding. Logan that's played it for us. So I, was, I was at your wedding and he was wasted. There's no way you could have taught him anything. Yeah, but this was the night before. I think the I wasted might have been the before. hungover from oh, the night yeah, before. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, let's go, Peter. Uh, are we still in the seven, first seven? Are we still in the seven beginners? No. No, we're on to intermediate stage oh, now. Intermediate. Lord, it's going to get uh, so, uh, this one's a bit of an easy one regardless, though. What was the highest selling video game console of all time? PlayStation 2. Yep. Shit. Uh, it was first released in 2000 in response to Sony's hugely popular original PlayStation. Shout out. Love it, man. The PlayStation 2 has become the best selling video game console of all time as of May 2023. It's pretty recent, man. It has sold over 158 million units worldwide. Who went out and bought PlayStation one in the PlayStation 3 last is the months? second. One of them was me. I bought a PS2 a couple of months ago. But oh, well, there we go. I yeah. already <laughs> own two. My so. wife bought one um, specifically for... Uh, Singstar? Singstar. Yeah, we did yeah. the same. Really, and really Buzz. good at parties. Eh? Yeah, Buzz, Buzz and way, Singstar Way back in the days. is a lot of fun. Yeah. Back yeah. in the days, it was Singstar, Buzz. What was the monkey one? There was a monkey trivia game. <sighs> And you have those buzzers? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I remember that one. Uh, yeah. That might have just been a and game on buzz, maybe. Did, did yeah. Guitar Hero stem from that too, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 That, that was popular, real popular. Yeah. Hit us, Peter, what do you got? Love me some Guitar Hero, man. So uh, next one, name a live action movie or TV show that was based on a video game. Tomb Raider. Shit. That's a good one. There's more than one. Lara Croft Tomb Raider. You only need to name one, though. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, and it's the first the come, first serve, oh, so uh, you I'm get that point, wrong. Nathan. Oosh. Okay, I've got to be more prepared. That's it. <laughs> we're, hearing, we're hearing them all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm, more prepared. Sorry. I'm going to Dylan's listen first. Last, I'm going to listen first. Oh, Let's go. So good. All right, what was the highest selling video game franchise? What is the highest selling video game franchise of all time? Aroha Mai. Uh, Grand Theft Auto. It is not Call of Duty or, oh, or Grand Theft Auto, yes, unfortunately. Really? I'm just going to sit tight. I might win on my oh, negative one. Oh, no, I'm back on zero. about before. Negative one. It's not one week, it's two. Fortnite. 
franchise. That's kind of... Fortnite's not a franchise. Isn't it? No, there's well, not I've multiple. said it. So, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a fucking... That, yeah, yeah. Uh, I might... Hold on, I don't... You oh, a chance fuck. to get some... Claw some points back here. Fuck, I'm too scared to answer. Well, Nothing bad will happen. Can, everyone's lost a point so far, so... Yeah, no, so yeah. I'm kind of... Give so it'll, be, it'll be absolutely <laughs> even. You've yeah. got a chance Give to Dylan go forward. I'm not answering. Alright. You will... Uh, respectfully pass. I pass, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's my you like one to answer? Pass. Oh, hold on, hold on. Is there a pass point failure? 100%. Yeah. Fuck, really? I've decided minus one for passing. Halo. <laughs> halo. I say Halo. <laughs> oh, not Halo quite. is a franchise, too. Not it quite. Is? It's not quite Halo, unfortunately. It? Mario. Oh, of course it is. Sakes. Of course it is. Who the fuck's it's bought Mario in the last 30 years? No. Everyone, apparently. <laughs> it's the, the highest. It's fucking awesome. Mario, Mario <laughs> franchise has been <laughs> four game of the years. It's the All highest. All of the gamers. Fuck me. It's been like the, the game since It's won four. Four game of the years mm-hmm. Mario has. Since, since way that, back in the day, back man. In Italian the day. plumbers. I should have known that one. Okay, so if we skip, if we pass one point off, if we answer wrong, two points off. That's right. Where's okay. the points even at? Where are we, Where are we at with the scoreboard? So up? we got Dills minus three, Logan <laughs> minus one, Eddie zero, Nathan zero. No, no, no. I should, I should be on one still. No, I don't think so, babe. You just you were on question. plus two before, and then you just lost two by... And then you got one by... wrong, so it takes you to zero. Two oh, minus w- two. Do we not get more points in intermediate? No. Oh, no, same, we do. same points. No, we do. Yeah. Intermediate's two points. Two points. Advance is three points. Yeah. Oh, look, that's just completely ruined his <laughs> scoring system. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> I have more points than what we... No, no, no. We'll just keep... I definitely do with my Lara Croft We'll keep it so Peter can keep scoring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I do enjoy this podcast, because what I find was each week... We play a game, and each week we manipulate the rules <laughs> as we go through the game. That's which, me at a board which game. Which does right. make it There's a lot of fun. Every game, yeah. Yeah. And I hate it. Yeah, halfway through, not going the long way. And Where's the rules? Lacks structure the rules. and direction, doesn't it? Eddie? I need that. Eddie, yeah, show, right. show me the rule book for this game. We wrote it down. Where's the rule book? It's yeah. just here. It's in the chat. It's in the group I'm chat. Not participating. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's minus one for failing to answer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll tell next. Y'all are just trying to squirm out of this mystery much. Yeah. That's why you're like, ah, oh, the rules don't go like this. That's why I like just, rules just, and just, structure. Just go. Because Dills is going to be eating it, so it's fine. All right, I'm going right, to smash one. the advance next round. Uh, what video game franchise does the quote, press F to pay respects, come from? Press F to pay respects. What game makes you press F to pay respects? Has to be Assassin's a computer Creed. one. You could just say it's a specific game, but is you can say the fr- you could say the franchise. It is not Assassin's Creed, yes. unfortunately. Pass. So you missed oh, one point. Yes. Press F to pay respects. Press F. It's got to be a computer game. So like Zelda. Or I'm going to say something like what fucking World of Warcraft. Not quite, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sorry. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hitting the point of no return. <laughs> Eddie's, got to, Eddie's got to get a countdown at some point. And Fortnite. Did, uh, did Nathan I uh, pass? Yep. Uh, so, it is uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Man, I remember playing this game heaps when I was uh, back in uni. So, this is just a bit of a deep cut from me that no, I wanted no. to thrust upon you guys. Nice. So uh, That was the one I didn't play. I don't, I don't play first-person yeah, yeah, yeah. shooters. It's when they had like the jetpacks and yeah, stuff and it went all sci-fi. Yeah, so, yeah, just I, to I, recap, all three of them lost two points and I only lost one. No, uh, you lost negative two as well. I did not. I passed. You can't make up those rules. <laughs> <laughs> so the score I have so far, do correct me if I'm wrong, Dill's negative five. You're wrong. That's that 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 got to be even. Logan negative one, Eddie negative one, Nathan negative two. Hold on, did everyone just lose yes. two points in there? Yes. How am I on negative five? Because you were on negative three got... before. Though. Ask some better You've been questions. Sucking. <laughs> 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 With that being said, here's another one. Oh, uh Last video game uh, related question. When did the first video game home console release? 1995. No. Oh, not quite. No, earlier. No, earlier. No, no, no. Been Commodore 64, Commodore you Nintendo, know, like right back oh, then, Atari, Sega. 1984. If the question was about PlayStation 1. I will allow, I will allow the uh, decade. 80s. 70s. 60s. I will allow the decade. So who said uh, 70s? Uh, you got it, Nathan. Yeah. Nice. What was you are it? back on zero. It is uh, 1972. The first commercial video game console was the Magnavox Odyssey. Oh, it was the... Uh, it was shortly followed by the release of the home version of Pong by Atari in 1975. Oosh. And that blew up everywhere, man. Pong. Mm-hmm. I did a Isn't Pong at the start of the last... Pong. <laughs> at the start That's of the last podcast. Yes, yeah, sure yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like table tennis. Pong. 
Oh, bro, oh, I, I really, we want it too. I used to love that game on Sky, and you could play the animals that would play like air hockey against each other. Yeah, do you remember, remember that one? Or yeah. you could play the carrot mania, and you go and Garrett dig through the dirt yeah. to try and get away from the foxes. Yeah, there was, was a, a game, game called Spiders Web. It was a ripoff of Pac Man. It was a good one. It's good that mention of spiders too, eh? Because isn't the mystery munch bought by bought to us by whom? <laughs> Sorry, Peter. Crawlies. Eat crawlers. Eat crawlers. Eat crawlers. Eat crawlers. I'm gonna be sponsoring that. You know, I'll be eat crawling you know, tonight. Representing, yep. Yeah, check them out on their social media. That is uh, Eat Crawlers. Got to be uh, shouting out the links real soon. So we've got but one more uh, segment of seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one yourself. is uh, history. Okay. Got some New Zealand history. Got some world history up in here as well. Yep. So uh, I feel like Eddie might uh, do well in this one. Mm. You know your history, my man. So uh, first one. Around when did the first Polynesians discover New Zealand? 13th century or 1300s. You are right there, my man. You get that point. I want to hear it more specific. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's no specific no. date for when they uh, discovered. Oddly enough, they, they didn't February, have Māori love being like 17, that, oral histories. Yeah. 1200s to the 1300s. Yeah. 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 Around then. So uh, It's disputed, but yeah. And they, and they didn't have I believe you are calendar. plus one. <sighs> Eddie. Nice. I'll probably sit on the fence till it's lost. You could just pass on every question and he would still lose. I'm actually kind of upset about this. Y'all are ruthless, man. Because I came up with this game. (laughs) And and you were trying to stitch me up because you're like, Nathan's not a gamer. Make sure there's gaming questions in there. He's been doing research all week on gaming. No, but I like the only question I answered. I got right. I love it. I don't do any of those. Well, like I like How the fuck were you games. calling out 2002 and shit yeah. like that and it was right? I'm, I'm was impressed so by your guesses, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you That's the only way I'm surviving on. right now. On guess panel. You should be <laughs> down with me, bro. <laughs> if, mind you, if we stitch guests up and give them the mystery munch, we're going to run out of guests on the show real quick. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going to do. Especially yeah. with that pie. Yeah. Fuck. Let's go. Oh. Next one. What was the name of the international group formed to maintain world peace after World War One? NATO, the heart. Not no. quite, unfortunately. Yeah. United Nations. I jumped. Yes. Who it said is. that? Who? It's United Logan. Nations. United Nations. Yeah. Not quite. Oh. Not quite. United Nations, man. I'm lucky. It was after World War One. Uh, the Allies defeated the uh, German Empire and the Ottoman Empire, and I believe the Austro-Hungarian Empire as well. So many empires. Wow. Age of just, just, yeah, it reminds the me age of Age of Empires. <laughs> I like that game. Um, oh, can you ask us some questions surrounding that game? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so me and We're Nathan need an answer, right? What's your answer, Nathan? Sorry, the, the organisation that was formed. Yeah. And it's not NATO and it's not... The UN. It was kind of yeah. like the... I'm going to say... The beta version of NATO. Mm. ISIS. Greenpeace. <laughs> <laughs> Are those your final answers? Because I'm chucking them in the score. It has to be. <laughs> Greenpeace. Everyone gets me. I'm, I'm Greenpeace defeated gonna pass. all these empires. I'm going to feel really stupid in a second because he's going to say an answer I've, and we're all going to go, uh, I've, of I've logged your scores as... Uh, I know what it is. What did I get? Your again. scores? It is League of Nations. League of Nations, yeah. Yeah. After the Treaty of Versailles. That, yeah, like yeah, yeah. that sounds like a Marvel uh, movie. It does. It does. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Justice League, League, you know. I knew it was yeah. the League of Nations. I jumped on it. I thought he said World War Two. Right on, man. You That's had, right. um, like, before World War Two, you had uh, uh, Italy, Mussolini, invading uh, Ethiopia, Abyssinia. The king of Abyssinia, Ethiopia at the time, went to the League of Nations, and he was like, hey, man, can you all help me out? This guy's invaded my country, and they did nothing. Oh, so, uh, yeah, man, shout out to the League of Nations for doing nothing for Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a uh, pretty horrible man. Uh, but yeah, then World War II happened. So moving on to the next question, uh, keep it on history. When did the first European officially discover New Zealand? 1700s. Are we doing year or are we no, doing shut century? Up. I just did we're what doing, you did. We're doing the year. I did what he did. <laughs> no, he did. you got to give the year. Well, you what did, did it. You say? What did you say? The question, the question <laughs> you was different. You can't just make up rules on the fly. Minus, minus four the for arguing. Was, the question was different. Minus four for arguing. When did yeah. Europeans come here? Is when did the first mm-hmm. European officially discover mm-hmm. New Zealand? 1734. Mm-hmm. Did I do a you? No. <laughs> Good uh, guess, but uh, not quite, unfortunately. I'm sorry, ma'am. Oh, no clue. No, neither. 18... Nah, maybe not. No, you said 18. It's 1800s. 18... 1856. 1850. 1650. 
I'm just logging your scores as an extra. Can we go uh, 1769? Oh, so because I was the closest. Mm. Uh, You remain on negative. Uh, Unfortunately, I'm not sure if. you winning that one will dig you out of the <laughs> that you're in, bro. Just fucking give it to me. <laughs> no. Dills is on about negative nine, isn't he? He so is. What? He negative is indeed. Nine. Yeah, so this this uh, segment is getting scrapped from future podcasts. <laughs> we, are, we aren't 21 questioning. <laughs> so it's now the, it's a regular. the guest has to eat something weird. Yeah, that's just... That's that's how many game. questions we got left, Peter? Three? Uh, four, five, six, seven. About four more. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Catch up. Hit us. Next question, gentlemen. Uh, during the New Zealand Wars uh, in the 1800s, the British suffered a major defeat at the Battle of Gate Par. Uh, what specific decade in the 1800s did this battle take place? 30s. Around total. 30s. 1830s? Yeah. Is that our answer? Yeah, 100%. Who said 1830s? Me. Me and Dylan. No, I said it first. It's first one, first serve. You ain't getting no my answer. That's true. Dylan did say it first. Did I get uh, it right? It, Went down 1864 during the Māori Land Wars. I hadn't actually answered yet. Neither had I. But, oh, uh, yeah, so that one's a right No, no, I think it's still... 60s. No, it's, not. it's more negative 63, points, maybe? 64. So that takes deals to minus 11, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. Eddie said 30s. So hang on a second. So there's three questions left. Uh, yep. My answers are as follows. Pass, pass, pass. I think that still leaves you with no chance of getting... No, I want to see if I, I could possibly get the points and then you guys could no, lose the points. You're too yeah, far. No, see, this no, is no. why the advanced questions need to be worth three. <laughs> <laughs> this is stuff we should work out off camera. We did work it out, but we forgot. It was, but he's been trying to manipulate That's right, because he's losing. Yeah. Changing yeah. the rules. Yeah, yeah. So, we had them. Yeah. So we didn't want them before. The first time around, let me, refer, let me take you back to a few short weeks ago where we had some beautiful, beautiful chilli sauces that uh, mm. Eddie and I were enjoying very much. And nobody lost, so Dills made us all eat the mystery munch. I ate it with you. You can't. He's like determined to like, you know, it's just like there's manoeuvring happening, eh, Eddie? Yeah. Manoeuvring. Always Surreptitious manoeuvring. manoeuvring. I prefer watching other people eat the mystery munch, I I'm think. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you he do. likes watching Especially other people suffer, that's his vice. Especially when it looks like a cow poo inside a pie. Let's go, oh, come on. Covered tarantula in this case. <laughs> Let's go. All right, so which agent figure is often considered the founder of Western philosophy? Gandhi. Socrates. He is Indian, unfortunately. Fuck. <laughs> the line is 13. Buddha. Asian figure. Modern Did you philosophy. say Asian? No, I said uh, which ancient figure. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought he said Asian. Yeah, I thought he said Asian. <laughs> you can take that back. That's all good. Which ancient figure is often considered the founder of Western philosophy? Gandhi. <laughs> Socrates? Socrates, I just said. <laughs> yep, it is Socrates. My man Socrates. Uh, I've been playing a video game called Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's like a game, Assassin's Creed, where you get to travel to different periods in time. And uh, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you're in uh, during the Peloponnesian Wars, during the 400s BC. Mm-hmm. And you get to, <clears throat> pardon me, you get to roll with Socrates. Oh, and he you? just talks a whole lot of smack to you. He's kind of annoying. <laughs> to be honest, so uh, yeah, shout out to all the Stoic philosophers out there, man. So you don't you don't have to record our points. Like we that. don't actually care as long as yeah. we're yeah. going backwards. Yeah. We're all good. I'm not sure if it's yeah. yeah if, it's is it worth? It's irrelevant. <laughs> Let's get Socrates on the podcast. Bang out the last two questions. Shout out to Socrates. Socrates. Yeah. Socrates. Yeah. Yeah. There's a pretty good chance that he is in fact dust. There's Plato in Aristotle. If he's that big, if he's getting questions asked about him 500 years down the track, he's probably mummified somewhere. He the is man. the man. Well, he created democracy. Okay. He's pretty awesome. Look so at how that worked fault. out, Greenpeace. <laughs> <laughs> Was he national or Labour? <laughs> how did that work he, out for he, you, Winston? He actually created the Is he Republican or Democrat? Oh, Lord. Let's ask oh, these last questions. But okay, let's get on to the next ones here before I start talking about politics. The people yeah. at home might want to try <laughs> yeah. and answer them. All right. Yeah, so yeah. the Great Pyramid at Giza was built as a tomb for which pharaoh? Tutankhamun. So democracy. Not quite Tutankhamun. I'm sorry, he was uh, buried in the Valley of the Kings. Minus 17. <laughs> Minus 17 for Dills. I think we've just hit a new record. The Pyramid of Giza. Um, Where is Cuzzy B? Was built. Tell for... me he has got something fantastic. I can see him out the side of our studio. I can't. He's smiling. He looks so bring, happy. Bring me some of that happy. shepherd's pie, Cuzzy it's B. An, it's an evil smile. I can't oh, wait to watch this. Fuck. Oh, oh look, look at this. I'm actually upset. At, least, hey, at least you get a nice shepherd's pie afterwards. After, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A beautiful shepherd's pie. A, ca- a palate cleanser oh, shepherd's fuck. pie. Am Not I right the only one still thinking quit. about the pharaoh? I just finished my drink. I've got no drink. I'm going to need something to... <laughs> 
Oh, if I lose, you've got an answer, Logan. Ah, no. please explain <laughs> how. Please it? explain how there's any coming back from minus seventeen when you can only get two points for a no, correct answer. Because one, one. we decided it was one point, but this last round was worth fifteen points, wasn't it, Bella? No, no, it wasn't. Not only that, um, I think you'll find that if everyone only. else is so far out of reach that we this could last just, round's worth fifteen. We could just lie at this point and you'll still lose. Let's yeah. go, Peter. Let's hear it. So oh, was no, uh, Pharaoh Kufu. Uh, around oh, 2000. Oh, Kufu, of course. I yeah. thought it was Farrah Monch. Our, our boy. Uh, Farrah Monch, yeah. I don't know that one. Bum, bum. A shout out to all the people da, da, around da, da. 2550 BC. Cheer, man. Uh, so, last question. Shout Who was the Roman reasons. emperor at the time the Colosseum was built? Do you all know your, your uh, ancient Roman history? Caesar. Hercules. <laughs> He's Greek. <laughs> <laughs> He's no, a, he's an action figure. He's a demigod. <laughs> he's a great demigod. A shout out to the Hercules Disney uh, cartoon. I love that yeah, guy. I like the one with Coliseum. the rock in it. Who puts the glad and gladiator? I'm going to go Hercules. Octavian. Who puts the glad and gladiator? <laughs> it's Hercules, man. I love that TV show. Uh, he's so, is it, he's, look, he's a happy gladiator. He was. He was Happier indeed. <laughs> man, you should see Hades in that, in that cartoon. He's hilarious. But... Uh, the emperor was Vespasian. Construction Vespasian, of the Colosseum yeah. began under the Roman emperor Vespasian around 70 to 72 AD. That's a long time ago, man. Uh, completed the structure around 80. Uh, he passed away by then. His son Titus uh, was emperor around then. So, uh, yeah, that Colosseum has been around forever, man. Shut up. And they're looking to... Pet- Pet- knocking it out of the park with the difficult questions. 100%. Yeah, but, I mean, that good, Colosseum, eh? they're looking to use it again for Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. How cool would that be? The Coliseum. Be pretty sick. Well, revitalize the Coliseum. Look, I, I, I like the idea of revitalizing it. That's cool. Yeah. Those two losers, it kind of seems yeah. like... They could do, it'd like... Be, it needs a, it needs a, a Muhammad fun. Ali versus Mike Tyson capacity. Yeah, yeah, someone that, like, actually matters and, and excels in their sport. But the you know, thing like is, if you're gonna... the thing is, if you put... The Floyd Mayweaver, Conor McGregor could have almost gone in there. Yeah. But if you're doing an Elon Musk and a Mark Zuckerberg on a Coliseum show lineup. There's going to be some big fights. I, mean, I, well, I think you know, the Tyson like, Fury Usyk fight should be there. That's, that's big. <coughs> I imagine their fight being um, them just like tweeting nasty comments comments yeah. back and forth at each other from a keyboard. Keyboard you know? warriors. Yeah, maybe yeah. they're taking a dump and they've <laughs> got their phone out and they're just like, you know. That's why it's the Coliseum because they're warriors, <laughs> keyboard warriors. That's uh, it. That's a little sad. I'm hoping that mystery munch is ready. Well, should we take a little break and um, come back to enjoy Dill's partaking and the delicious mystery munch. I think so. Yeah, I need another drink. Yeah, yeah so I'm just going to uh, hide. Do we need a bucket? Cups. Let us take a break, gentlemen. Awesome. All right. Shall we uh, jump it. right back into a gentleman? Yeah. So we're going to be jumping right into that mystery munch. Before we do, want to give a shout out to our sponsors. A big shout out to On Target Productions for all of your videography needs. Uh, they're handling uh, the visuals uh, for this podcast as well. Check them out online. That is On Target Productions. Shout out to Kyoto FM 89.8 as well. Uh, check out the Wa Fakata, uh, the show of yours truly, 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, weekdays. Chill vibes up in here. Also, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of our mystery munch, Hello Crawlers. Uh, the man Dills is going to be uh, going to be treating his taste buds to some chili chocolate locusts. Fun times ahead, man. Uh, yeah. Although some of us want to try some of it because uh, it looks pretty interesting, man. I'm not going to lie. Some gourmet level uh, crawlers. So shout out to Eat Crawlers. Check them out on their Instagram and Facebook page or on their website, eatcrawlers.co.nz, based in Browns Bay, Auckland. Uh, shout out to Eat Crawlers, man. Thanks for sponsoring us for this mystery munch. Thanks for hooking us up with those uh, chili chocolate locusts, man, that Dills is going to enjoy in front of us. He's he's lucked out. There's no way. <coughs> there's no way this is as bad as Eddie's poo pie that he had last I don't week. Know that. It's, it, it, one, it's a, it's a fucking bug, right? Yeah, but it's coated in chocolate. For yes, no, no, but it the it chocolate might, ain't nice. The worst thing I've eaten is the worst thing I've eaten is tarantula. It's, it's what, it's from these guys? It was yeah, that. It was this the, brand. It's from them. And I ate it. I gave some to my old grand Yuck. my grandfather. Yep. And I said, fuck, that tastes like shit. And he said, don't ever say that because I'd rather eat shit. <laughs> so if you really think that's going to be really nice, I think we should have a little look. I think you should go first. Let's, no, let's no Dylan's got to go first. You have to go first. Oh, Dylan, Dylan has to go first. There's yeah. more of that manoeuvring, that yeah, constant, yeah, like, no. squirming, yeah. worming, <coughs> like, how do like, out of this? I want to yeah. say, though, old mate like, minus 17. The old, um, we've done all the plugs for the sponsorships, and, uh, and I just want to point out that the old making 19. a statement entertainment aspect, and the old making a statement apparel, the making a statement podcast, you know, all the, all of this was my idea. How is it that I'm now here sitting, It makes me very happy. It's so happy. Because you made the wrong statement. I fucked up. 
You more fucked than up. I fucked up with that Titanic answer from the fucking. Well, let's do the math. If you do minus 19, you've fucked up at least I don't 10 think you times. Pressure. I think Out of 21 got the first questions. Wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just. I just, uh, <coughs> just, just decided. Okay, guys. Oh, it it's kind on. of looks like I've got two there. I don't that's know how big a locust is. No, no, no. Take backs. You've put it in your hand. Okay. You've touched it. You have to play that food. There is a couple of locusts out of the bag of locusts. And I'm scared a little bit. I reckon you should do this one that looks like a whole cockroach. Let's zoom right in <laughs> well, there. Look at that let's, bad boy. Let's get a good shot of it, Dills. Look at it. You should have this one. Oh, yeah. You want me to have this one? That one, yeah. Oh, that one's... You can see the legs That's a whole stuff. cockroach. Okay. <laughs> bro, I've, nasty, I've started bro. this thing... Oh, we'll <laughs> I've started this thing where they're now called dick roaches. They ain't cockroaches anymore. They're dick roaches. What's the... Where's the littlest piece? Okay. Little, little Are we ready? Oh, it's crunchy. <laughs> it's very crunchy. It's very dry. Mm. You want some? There is a subtle spice. How would you rate it out of 10? Uh, Stop like the bat. I like to try it. I'm not finished. Yeah, we'll let Dylan finish. I love this garden. I don't know, you know how you eat like a really big piece of steak and you just have to keep chewing it because it just won't chew up enough for you to swallow it? Any good? That's Chewy. Nah. <laughs> kind of tastes like... Bug. Oh. <laughs> like, if you could make raisins crunchy, and this, cover it in chocolate This and doesn't chili. sound like a punishment. Old mate got a poo pie. And he's, yeah, like, he's practically pie. smiling eating that. I feel like pulling yeah. out one of the, what is in my mouth and just seeing what this looks like now. I think Chef Cuzzy B wants one. They are spicy. There's yeah, a little is it a good yeah. spice? Yeah, there's, there's, that's weird. It's but just weird. Like, no, no I think one's the going, worst part is no the texture and how gross. stuck in your mouth it is. It's really dry, eh? Yeah. It's not even ugly. Nah. I'd eat, I'd eat that whole bag. Yeah. Uh, I probably would have. I don't know about eating <laughs> the whole bag. Nah. Although, I know a guy that ate It's almost like 20 um, bucks. So. Yeah, and saying that, let's, let's speak on that. What's the worst thing you guys have ever done for money? <laughs> That's a really, Pass. really... Because <laughs> I can tell you right now... Got up every day at 5am and went to work. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, Pretty bad. It's that's, weird. They're spi it's, it's actually spicy. Mine was I ate dog shit for twenty bucks. Oh yuck! But it was the There's worst dog shit you've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. I it used the twenty bucks to buy a box of toys <laughs> and a hot dog for me. <laughs> that's the whole story. <laughs> How much dog shit? Uh, it, was it was kind a of good just a finger big, scoop. Is it called a dollop? No, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! How do I not know this? Because you weren't there. I don't talk about it very often. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a similar shade of white, yellowy hey. green. Did, like, did he, uh, Logan, would you describe the look on his face after as a shit-eating grin? Well, it actually wasn't the facial you would expect to be fair. <laughs> was he just kind of smiling? And... It was just kind of like, I'd I just say, just... dog shit, here's my 20 bucks, I'm out. Yeah, and, and then we carried on with the night, you yeah. know, because we've touched on these times of my drinking days, right? Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. a professional. That, that was one mm. of the days. Goodness me. <laughs> we drank that day. We drank the whole day. How do you like it, Cuzzy B? Not too bad. Not too bad? It's not too bad. It's, it's, it's not even really a punishment. That, I mean, it, but it is a mystery month. That's right, it is it's a, a mystery, mystery month. I mean, that could have no tasted one, like straight No bug. one said they had to be a horrific, yeah, disgusting exactly. munch. Yeah. They're a mystery munch. Yeah. I would, I'd eat another one of those. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of um, what the... Crunchy crispiness is like it's almost like um, locust. Like no, no, <laughs> yeah, exactly like locust. Um, almost like a like a Butterfly? crispy skin, you know, like a um, you shell. Know, when you get like something crispy like off a like peanut. meat. Like when nah. you a so an when you get peanut. your when you get your bacon and egg McMuffin and you bite into it and some who has left a big chunk of eggshell in it. That's what that is. That's the texture. I didn't, I didn't oh, get yeah. that, that chalkiness that you get with eggshell. I did. I just said almost like an over fried egg and you get the bit around the edge that's like really crisp. Yeah. Or that kind of off, texture. Yeah. Oh, or a yeah. broken off nail on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where are broken you guys shopping for your burgers? Like <laughs> what are they serving <laughs> down in Foxton? <laughs> oh, this must it's be the same place I got the dog shit from. <laughs> Good no. lord. Hey, so on a serious note, um, Logan came along and he had a couple of topics that he was um, quite mm. keen to sort of yeah. talk to us about and along the lines of breaking the stigma and talking about maybe some of the tougher topics. Yep. Do you want to um, dive into that, but no time like the present? <coughs> no time like the present? Uh, where should we start? Um, Break it down for us, brother. Mental health and uh, being medicated is um, something that I wanted to talk about because being medicated... Um, as a topic is taboo is is there is a stigma around that 
um, I found from quite an early stage that I was really embarrassed to to tell people that um, you know I have anxiety, I have depression, and I'm I'm actually medicated for it. Um, no one wants to say any of that to their to their mates, to their workmates, to anything like that. Um, but the truth is, the medication is there to help you get better, or at least to ease some of that. Um, I don't want to say pain, but whatever's going well, on for you. That's a fair description. And I think people like completely fail to understand that uh, we're talking about brain chemistry. Yeah. And and that medication is literally helping balance brain chemistry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and like uh, you, you get a bug, you take an antibiotic to kill it, don't you? Yeah. You know, you're quite happy to take um, a paracetamol for a headache or something. You know, you'll yeah. take you'll take a, what's the one that? Gaviscon with a fireman spraying the white gunk down oh, that chest that. throat. When I eat too much fucking junk, oh, man. but you know what I mean. So like, Locus. so so why for you know why why therefore is it not okay to take something to correct a challenge with brain chemistry? Yeah, you know, exactly. like because that is literally what we're talking about. And I think it was my mother-in-law. Um, she asked one day. You know, I think I was I was um, having a bit of a spaz one day and just losing the plot. And she said, "Are you?" Still taking your, um, your antidepressants, and I said, "No, stop taking them. They weren't working." Ding, ding, ding. And she goes, "Well, you're diabetic. You're asthmatic. If you go for a run and now you're short of breath, and you know you start having an asthma attack, what do you do? You have your your inhaler, but you have your preventer as well in the morning to prevent shit like this happening. <laughs> Same with hay fever, right? You're supposed to Same take your hay fever so tablet in the, the morning. So exactly. What it's is the still hang up? just medication. That's right. Um, so, fuck, don't be ashamed to talk about that, you know. Um, I talk to the boys at work about um, my, my diabetes, my type 1 diabetes, and what to do and how to help in a situation where my blood sugars go low. Um, why not talk about your, your antidepressants? Why not talk to uh, your workmates about your your anti-anxieties and, and what's going on. Um, you know, it is, it really is breaking that stigma, but yeah, it's, and it's a lot more common than uh, people seem to realise. Um, yeah. yeah. It is. Pa partly it because is. it's swept under the carpet, not yeah. talked about, hush, hush, mm -hmm. bit taboo. Yeah. You know, like, that's stupid. Let's, I think what's smash that. probably yeah. more common is people not wanting to seek help for it. I mean, there's probably a yeah, lot of people out there with undiagnosed mental mm -hmm health problems that yep. could Certainly. have a better life if they 100%. spoke up. Some of my ex-girlfriends, 100% undiagnosed mental health issues. You can relate to that. It have to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> the wild ones. That was unfair. Yeah. Yeah. A little it still, bit unfair. It still amused me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> the wild ones. Oh, man. dear. Um, did, you, did you have any other... Um, in your in your little list of magic topics, um, do you have any other stuff that you wanted to like? Yeah, probably the one I wanted around? to touch on uh, that's more recent or raw for me is um, facing imposter syndrome. So, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, is um, feeling like you don't deserve or you don't belong where you have worked to get to. Oh my God, I'm Every dealing with day death. of the week. What I have to face right now with myself, right, with everything I'm doing, the services I'm providing, the sh everything I'm trying to build with my making a statement entertainment umbrella, I keep looking at myself because I analyze everything, use critical thinking to get my way through everything, right? And I sit there and I look at myself and I go, how am I being perceived? Am I being perceived the correct way? Am I doing this for the right reasons? I'm sitting there trying to, even though I know my, at heart exactly what I'm wanting to achieve. You're sitting there overanalyzing it, going, are people, am I just trying to make myself awesome? Am uh, I trying to build my own profile through doing this? So I think I'm kind of looking at myself through everybody else's eyes and every possible avenue that they could take from what I'm trying to do. And then I'm questioning it like, Am I doing that? And then I'd have to sit there and pick it all apart because yeah. I feel like what I'm achieving, everybody's like, you're doing so well, you're doing this, you're doing that. And I have to sit there and reflect and like, be like, am I? You know yeah. what I mean? Because I don't feel like I deserve all the praise yet because I haven't achieved what I want to achieve yet. But yeah. that, that, Because you're not finished. Yeah, I'm not finished, but I have to just keep putting that that lens on myself and just questioning myself, I'm really, am I doing this for I'm the right really reason? I'm really struggling with that. You know, like, so, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons I haven't watched too much of the playback because I think I'll get into that. If I watch too much of the podcast, oh, how, do, how, do I, how am I coming across? How am how I, I coming? And I don't want to. So I work on the basis that I will just be me. I'm real critical of myself, so I haven't been Same. doing it. Yeah. I'm Same. highly critical. So the people watching this will go, 
he's a dick or he's funny or yeah. what they'll think what they think and I'm okay with that because it is me. I'm not putting anything on me. You guys know I'm exactly like this <laughs> oh, when yeah. the cameras are off <laughs> yeah, and I'm exactly the same when they're on and, and um, I'm trying to be authentic and I'm not trying. I'm just being authentic yeah. And, yeah. and they'll like it or they won't. But I'm really struggling with imposter syndrome, especially with my, my business because um, – I'm, I think it's because I'm not sure what success is or when or what finished is, you know what I mean? So I started doing this thing and I'm making some films and I'm shooting the odd wedding and stuff and you're kind of faking it till you make it a little bit. And then I look back now and I've filmed something like 80 weddings and that's just a portion of what On Target Productions does. I've filmed 80 weddings and I'm like, well, I, I, you know, can I call myself an expert? Can I say that I'm experienced, that I'm good at this now? Because I've done a heap and I'm giving people good advice and I think I make a good product. And then... Um, so what is success? What is winning? You know, like heck this year I've filmed a television show for an international television company. Like, is that success? Cause like, I don't think I did my best work on that and I could have done a bit better. And you know, if I just like, you know, done this with the microphone or that with the camera and it's, you know, it's not quite up to my standard and people are like, holy shit, bro. Like, you know, you love hunting. You got flown into the Southern Alps to film for a hunting show for an international television show. I'm like, is that not success? And I'm like, I don't know, I don't think it was my best work. You know, Indeed. like every day I face into this. And I was just talking to a um to a, a colleague today and she said she's having exactly the same problem. And and she, like she is now sought after for her work. Like people are banging her door down. And I had to remind her that a year ago she was chasing work and trying to make ends meet and now she is actively choosing what work is high value. What work's being turned away because it's low value? What work's being turned away because she doesn't agree with it ethically? It doesn't fit her values, so she's not going to contribute to that. And I'm like, far out. That's a pretty massive leap forward. Where at one point you're just taking anything, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel to make sure. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'll film film feet videos for OnlyFans just to make some money to like keep the lights on, kind of thing. Whereas yeah, now you're like, I have to ask Logan, where did that question or or topic stem from from for yourself? For me, um, so at, at uh, at work in Higgins here, Palmerston North, um, I am the youngest class five driver by 25 years. Wow. Um, so, you know, everyone always talks about the trucking industry being in an absolute shortage. Um, this is the gap that we're talking to, about trying to fill. Um, yeah, 25 years is a long, long time. And for me, I feel like an imposter because I'm 28 years old. These guys have been driving longer than I've been alive. Um, but here I am trying to pace them, trying to keep up with the work they've, they've been doing for years. Um, Were they not driving that same class at your age now, though? Well, that's the thing. It's like, where, where were they at compared your age? to where I am? Yeah, that's right. Um, but it's, it's, again, like we talked about um, being the hardest on yourself. Yes, you um, are your own worst critic. Oh, absolutely, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but one thing is, I, I know I'm a lazy perfectionist. I like to get well, things like right, too. but I don't like to have to work for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's the easiest way to hit this out of the park? <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think I like everyone it. sort of has a bit of a touch of that, um, but then there's other people that will skimp out of doing it, and then there's other people who will you know, probably... overdo it. Overdo it, yeah. I think I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are, because you, you've, got, you've got the grind. You yeah. absolutely grind everything you've always had it since you were a kid you've always had a grind you grind everything you do and some stuff you can't you can't learn unfortunately some people will Dylan be Dylan will outwork you Simple that's right that. that's Dylan right and some people you. will be successful because they are just wired that way period natural talent yeah, yeah. that's right and and I'm sorry kids that you know sometimes you'll come second yeah you know and no one's going to give you a medal, medal for participating in life I swear yeah. like every year at cross country <coughs> I came second to to a guy called Blake. Mm. We, took, we ended up being really good friends in our college years, but during primary school, he, I looked at him as my nemesis. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted what he was getting. I Not wanted, nemesis. yeah, yeah, rival, it rival. Was nemesis at the time. Nemesis. Nemesis. <laughs> too many, too many Avengers movies. Yeah, it's a friendly competition. <laughs> yeah. But um, every year, I was coming second in the in the school cross country. He was coming first, and then into schools, he was coming first. I was coming second. Then one year, Blake missed the, the school cross country and I got to come first. <laughs> so, and then I went on to inter schools and, and I won wonderful. it. And I, and, I, and I won it. But at the end of the day, I had just kind of accepted, like, no matter how much I trained and no matter how hard I was pushing myself to try and get to where I needed to be, my only win of any year was that one year he wasn't there because he outperformed me in that one thing. Yeah. It's just some people that would, will naturally be better, there's some people that will just 
do above and beyond what you can do as yeah. long as you're giving it your best though i mean that's when where we should be proud right yeah 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 well how much training was he doing i wouldn't know I'd exactly to... i bet you he just outgrinded you i always got smashed by the kids that did I, the milk runs i always thought i always thought other kids were just genetically better than me but then when you look at it they were actually training yeah. where i wasn't training in cross country there's this fella and blake fighting over first and second and there's me and the bro at the back fighting yeah. over just sec- just trying to second and first last yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 there's me just trying to finish the damn cross country yeah. i think one year i run it with a broken leg up and over the the college hill into the um into the pine trees and all that so tell me, Logan, uh, you have you have this imposter syndrome. You're looking at these older guys, you know, like arguably more experienced, wiser, yeah. rah, 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 they've made a career of it. Um, you know, like, are you happy at work, though? You know, like, are you feeling fulfilled and satisfied with what you're achieving? Um, that is a very, very good question um, because with your driver's license, obviously, um, with me being a type 1 diabetic, that makes it, re- like, quite hard mm. to actually obtain the next classes of license um and and to be able to hold on to them um so for me i always had the class five up on a pedestal like oh, that's where i'm going that's that's the one i need to get to and then i'll be like you were saying is that that's the success that's yes. the measure of success yeah for what me. does good look like yeah. yeah um and then i got there and i started learning and i started doing the job and i'm like okay now what mm, i faced yeah, that myself with music and what do i do now like I've got, I think I've got one one part on my license left to do, and that's my motorcycle license, and yeah, and then it's full, and then what do I do after that? I'm is actually it, is that a void that everyone has? Cause well, yes, it is. It's a yeah, void. It's absolutely, and I, it. and I think it's important to like point it out that everyone feels that way, yeah, yeah. and it's well. not unusual, and you're not broken. Mm. The um, I think I've sort of I've had that same thing. I'm like, what the hell does good look like? Because because I'm. I'm comfortable and I'm making a living and those those were goals, right? I just yeah. wanted to like pay my bills and because now I'm paying my bills doing something I love doing instead of working for the man. So then the next thing becomes, well, actually, is my next goal to go, I want the freedom that goes with more time with my children, more time with my wife. I want to spend more time in the mountains. So now does success look like choosing the jobs that I agree with ethically, that pay well, that buy me buy me the freedom? Yeah. You know, I can do this one job that's worth twice as much, which means I can take a week off and go play in the hills. Like, mm-hmm. is that success? And I think that I think that's actually success. You know, like if you ask someone that's got all the money in the world, they will tell you you can't. You know, you can't buy health with money. They want they want health or time. You know, yeah. like those are the things. So it's like, well, maybe that's maybe that's your next thing. Like, do you go for that class five role that has um, more sociable hours? Yeah, the flexibility. Or, yeah, or a slightly better pay rate that you know changes the quality of your life. Is it a freedom bit. we're all searching? Oh, definitely I think, myself. I think everyone is it freedom always, well, what that we you, chase. What would you do with it? So this is the other thing too. So plenty of people win lotto, right? So they're financially set free. But I think they, you just have to have a free? strong mind frame to know what to do with that time. You need to value time, and you only value yeah. time when you sacrifice time. Yeah. yeah. So if somebody that's on the dole wins the lotto, is their life going to change? No, Probably not. Burn through that cash. Some, somebody who's grinding yeah. nine to five and then going home from work and working all night, and then and I say this all the time. The reason why I go home and work all night is because if I just went home and I didn't do anything, I'm waking up tomorrow and I'm just Doing going to my nine to five. Nothing grind. changes, right? Yep. You have to make the change, yeah. and so I think. Yeah, if somebody that values time would know how to utilize yeah. that well, even freedom you, aspect. Even if you've got money, right? That doesn't create the freedom. Not is necessarily. It, is it freedom? Is it only when you retire, bank out, when you're no, not attached to anything? Is it? What though? I'm getting at is, if you live in a, if you're rich and live in a terrible country, are you free? Well, then you're not living your freedom. No. It's 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 depend. What he's what he's driving at is how you define freedom. You is define it just it. financial freedom? Is it freedom to hang out with your family, or is it being free from oppression and oppression. you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so that's this is the game. This that that uh, universal question is what does good look like? You know, like what is success for me? What does freedom look like for me? You know, because for some people it would just be clearing the mortgage, hmm. and that would be their success. yep success I've freedom it. Yeah. nailed it. My you know? su- my success, and I already know what how I would be happy is having all of my financial thing bills in that cupboard playing golf. That's what I'm going to do when I retire. That's me. I know that will, whether I'm playing good golf or bad golf, it doesn't really matter. It's just that pursuit. That's really sad. 
<laughs> it's not sad. That's my freedom. I know, I know, because yeah. I, I just, I suck at golf. <laughs> like, I'm just I don't play golf, I play whack fuck. <laughs> that's what, that's <laughs> exa- oh, so I raised this the other week, that's exactly what I call it, what? whack fuck, because that's how every shot goes. Whack, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stupid I game, did a chasing that. a little whack ball around. three times yesterday. Whack yeah. fuck. Whack fuck. I, I've done whack through the golf club. I've done so whack. I've, I've done so whack and the golf club went further than the ball. I don't know how the fuck that happened. You were, you're describing my, my rage would come out so quickly in that game. I just haven't got the patience for it. Yeah, It's yeah. a very frustrating sport. Mini golf yeah. though. 100%. Yeah, yeah, my wife and I have um, nah, they just get a, too competitive. Ruthless, a ruthlessly competitive <laughs> no, streak between everyone, us. Everyone, for some reason. Mini golf. Mini golf. Yeah, watching people lose their shit yeah. on it. You know, yeah, that's right. You paid eight bucks for that round. Yeah. But the non golfers come through and they clean up. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, it's a little bit like um, playing pool or darts, though, when you're drinking. There's a sweet spot where another beer will ruin it, but at exactly that level of beery drunkiness, you are like. It's the same it. with karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think there's any amount of alcohol For yourself. That makes, yeah. For yourself. <laughs> yeah. You perceive it. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, when you're okay. on the karaoke, you hit the okay. own sweet spot. That's perspective. right. Yeah, and it is, yeah, yeah. so my perspective is there's no sweet spot for everybody else if no. I'm involved in karaoke. There's no such thing as no. Nathan sounds good singing. But if you're in your zone, you're in your zone, right? Hundy. The, yeah. I reserve all of that for my car, uh, fortunately, for everybody else. Yeah. Wow. I think we're going to wrap up, Pitta. Um, I just want to put that out there to everybody that's been watching or has watched or has shared or has given us a comment, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, in the messages or out on the golf course, as Eddie put it. Um, thank you. Thank you for supporting what we're trying to build. We're at the very beginning. We've got big goals. We've, we've you know, we're all going to, we're all prepared to work our butts off to to get this to where we want to get it to, but we can't do it without you guys. So if you're watching this, please hit the share button, hit the like button, drop your comments. We want to, you guys all to participate. If you're wanting to see us eat something disgusting for a mystery munch, let us know what that is. If you want us to answer questions that will help break the stig- stigma around mental health and everything in that space, drop the questions. And if you want some making a statement apparel, jump on my website, makingastatement.co.nz. Beautifully put. We're going to shout out our sponsors uh, for the last time. Uh, presented to you by Making a Statement Entertainment and Kyori FM 89.8. Uh, check us out, man. Visuals brought to you by On Target Productions and the Mystery Munch brought to you by Eat Crawlers. Uh, check them out on their Instagram and Facebook page, Eat Crawlers, or one word, or at their website, eatcrawlers.co.nz, uh, based in Browns Bay, Auckland. I uh, also want to shout out Buckley's Golf Course and Shannon for their upcoming Twilight Golf Tournament. Are you <coughs> able to uh, give us a bit of a lowdown on that, Eddie? Uh, so, tea offers between 5pm and 5.45pm every Friday. Um, if you head off to the golf course there, ask for a guy called Lance, because Lance is organising that one. And... Uh, you will actually go into a draw. So if you participate, you will actually go into the draw to for the uh, up and coming New Zealand Open next year at Queenstown. And uh, accommodation, if you do win that prize, accommodation will be uh, supplied as well. So that's actually a pretty good little prize if you can win it. And where is this based? Uh, that's uh, Buckley Golf Course is actually a part of Shannon, so it's not far. Um, it's not too far from the township. And that whole Twilight Golf Buzz, eh? quite a nice way, stretch the well, legs, a little bit of exercise, part of introduction. Whole, well, connecting I, to people, well, though, I'll, five I'll ways actually, well I'll actually touch base on that. So I'm actually a golfer because of Twilight. So I was awesome. a rugby player. I was a cricket player. I, I just went along to Twilight, and I've been hooked ever since. So. Awesome. So quite a fun introduction then, eh? Obviously sounds like not yeah. too much pressure or anything. Yeah, well, the, the, the club did at Ambrose. Um, I'm not too sure what Lance has actually got organised over there. I like Ambrose, yeah. Yeah, but I... <laughs> <laughs> so if it's I a wanted to, uh, if I wanted to pick up golfing, because I've never done golfing before, man. If I wanted to dip my toe, toes into the world of golfing, man, could I come along to this and check it out? Oh, of course. Uh, uh, past golfers, current members of any other club, and uh, non-golfers are all welcome. What there. if you've got no weapons? I'm no pretty clue. sure there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of golf clubs there. I'm pretty sure if you turn up, Lance will sort you out and well, give you a couple clubs. Awesome. I'm pretty sure Lance will be here. Yeah. Shout out, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> Namahi, Lance. Namahi. Namahi, man. Uh, shout out to our sponsors again. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. 
Uh, just before you wrap it up, I just want to say thank you to Logan for coming in and sharing his experiences. Of really course. appreciate it, Logan. Really Thanks for your honesty. It. Of yeah. course. And yeah, we're going to quite often have rotating guests through the, sh- through the pod, whether it's just one of the bros, whether it's a family member, or whether it's one of your fa- you know favourite famous people around the Obviously country. Obviously, stay like tuned Mike- for Mike King. Mike King, yeah. I was about to plug that one. Yeah. Manifesting. And uh, yeah, we'll so see. So like you. and share to Mike King, people. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tag Mike King in this. We'd love to have you along. Tag him. Yeah, 100%. Shout out to Mike. Yeah. He's doing some awesome work. Hell yeah, man. And uh, you'll end it there. Oh, shit.